Okay, more. here we go. So welcome along to Escapade. Episode Escapade 19. Show, uh, number 19, aye. Number Amazing. 19. Amazing. We have a, a guest here with us today. I'm sure uh, you'll know who he is. Mr. Harvey McKay's in the studio. Thanks for coming. All right, my pleasure. Thank aye, you. Great to have you down. Chats there, probably Aye. brilliant content. Eh? <laughs> I've all, all this amazing content. Now Nothing else to say now. We'll, 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 so we'll hit the <laughs> wall. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> Aye, right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we were getting great chats, catch up about some old friends and the yep. scene in general. Yep. Um, a one who's also been, it makes everyone Mallorca Lee. He always gets aye. a shout out, so aye, aye. he is a good guy, so we need to bring him up every time. <laughs> so, again, thanks for coming along. No, it's uh, no, it's been a long time coming. Aye. Now, recently, you've got, I mean, amazing stuff's happening uh, in the, the Mackay land at the moment. <laughs> but what do they call you in Europe? Uh, McKay or McKee. Right, there we go. That's what we were just talking about. So um, recently, mm -hmm. the latest EP that uh -huh. just came out on We Are The Brave, yep. Alan Fitzpatrick's yep. label, mm -hmm. we are listening to that stuff yeah, earlier that and we were one. just like, I mean, the, nice the one, man. morning mm -hmm. rave. They're all different as well, the tracks in that EP. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I quite like about it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Every track's completely different from each other do you know what I mean uh -huh. mm. but it all kind of works do you know what I mean it does I think, I think it does anyway no it definitely does I like it it's got a bit of old school in it as uh, well aye. you know it's got the, the modern twist yep. as well it's Alan Fitzpatrick's doing a lot of good stuff just now as well he is aye, aye. I mean that's the thing that the, the label's kind of do, doing the business and the thing is I mean with Alan um, I I'd, had I'd, I'd those three tracks and I sent them off to him on the Friday and literally by the Monday he just replied and he's like I love them all was playing them all weekend take them and a heartbeat that was it you know what I mean Brilliant. job done and I've known Alan for a long time so yeah. it's great to be kind of working with him you know aye, so how far do you and Alan go back then you... well I mean I kind of know Alan just as when he just started uh, working with drum code and stuff and stuff was kicking on with him and then it took me a while to get it, sort of start working with drum code but I've kind of known him just kind of like in passing from maybe 2011 but it was from 2014 when I signed to drum code and doing shows together we got to know each other a wee bit better and stuff like that and mm. you know what I mean so just bumping into each other at gigs and stuff so he's somebody that's got a really diverse taste he does have a uh, very diverse taste his aye, radio aye. shows go quite proggy actually aye. and you know he goes very housey you never know well. what, you never know what to expect but you know I what I mean it's, it's never, a good thing it is a good thing it is, it's good having diversity I think. I think I think so do you think techno in general has got really diverse recently or? <sighs> diverse I don't know man um, see the thing is I try not to overthink it I'm I'm one of these people, I just stick my head in, stick my head down, make music in the studio, and when, when I'm looking for music, I don't even think about it too much, I'll just listen to tracks and feel the energy, buy them, play them, that's it, I don't, I don't really get too deep in thought about the whole thing, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, well, there's been a massive boom in Aye. techno, I think, recently. Oh, like, techno, it's, 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 always the been, it's always been there, but I don't know, the whole EDM thing's f far gone now, Aye. thankfully. Aye. And, uh, like, you know, I just, there's so many people now going to, like, these big yeah. festivals, Awakenings is just kicking off. It's, it's, yeah. it's healthy. Awakenings is just incredible. I mean, that was, so I was played the Drum Code Festival last weekend there, and that was in partnership with Awakenings, so it was Awakenings were doing all the production. And right. So you're getting how was it then? How was it? <clears throat> Amazing. Aye. My mum was with me as well. Wow. Aye, she was up behind me throwing some shapes. Aye. Some salsa moves. Yeah. It's like, mum, pack it in, pack it in. <laughs> Telling the vibe, yeah. I could see Ryan in the back going, oh. I know. I can see a viral video happening here man <laughs> <laughs> so it went well then it went really Amazing well production. it went really really well who were you playing in amongst uh, it was Boxia before me and then it was me and then it was Dense and Pika I can't remember who else was on the bill after I think Nicole Mulderborough was on well, like but that. I can't remember man I'm really terrible with stuff mm. like that yeah. but you had fun how long was, 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 was it was amazing I had, well, I had I was playing in uh, Vienna on Friday uh, and I had a great gig there, really, really, really good gig. The energy was really, really good. And then, as I say, I had uh, the Drum Code Festival and my, my family and everything were there, and it was great. You know what I mean? The thing is, my mum's been to shows. I mean, she's came and seen me at the art school and the arties and stuff, but she's never came away and seen a proper big show like that. Do you know what I mean? And it's one of these ones, it's because anytime she's been asking, you're always worried to invite somebody to one, if, unless it's no good. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I knew that the Drum Code <clears> away. I was like, no, definitely come to that one. That one will be a cracker. So her... 
and uh, my stepfather David he came as well and they just absolutely loved it they were that's loving amazing it. and it's like see you've been able to bring like parents along and go this Aye. is what I'm actually that's doing that's my boy Do you know it's what I mean? quite funny as well because my mum she plays saxophone and she's in a, ba- a blues band wow, cool. wow. and they, rele- they, they recorded a track and they released it on iTunes right and it, be- it was number one in the UK blues chart really? so when we're backstage right at Awakenings right and it's a Martin who run- one of the guys who runs it she's chatting away at him she's going did Harvey tell you I've got a number one <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I know, oh. brilliant man. Well, you've had you've had what, three number ones, haven't you, in the technical I charts? think so. Aye, aye, aye. Yes. Well, I was doing my research. Eh? Aye. Well, so that's good. So I mean, that there you go. A family of number ones. Aye, man, that's well, not bad. Aye, aye. So, so you've been doing stuff as well aye. with your brother as well. The yep. whole alias thing. Aye, What's aye. happening with that? Well, we've just been. Uh, see, the, the, the thing was, Ryan had been working on music, and um, he'd just been getting. He was starting to get to a point where I could just hear him coming on massively, and I thought, you know what, we'll just do a wee project together for fun and see if it kicks off and it, but once we started working together we went wait a minute something quite this different is what, this we're is not what. just getting together and making mu- like making tracks like something's actually sort of occurring yeah. and Alias was really born the whole sound has developed and it just it's the thing is we work very very differently there's things that Ryan pushes for that I don't and there's things that I do that he doesn't so we complement each other well as far as for the the, the, the end products a lot better that way do you know what I mean there's certain things that he'll spend a lot of time on that I wouldn't even think about and you can hear that in the tracks do you know what I mean Yeah, that's that's, cool that's cool as you said before it's like you can hear it in his music that he has spent that time like developing the sound which is important I mean this is the thing he's been sending me music over the over the past few weeks as well and Literally every batch of tracks he, he sends me, it just gets better and better to the point I'm going, fucking, okay, he's better than me. You know, <laughs> stuff's amazing, like uh, really blowing me away. So, but as we were talking about earlier on, it's it's that time he's spending that amount of time. Do you know what I mean? He's really putting in the hours, and that, you can see it coming that's off. That's what you, know? you need to do. You do, you do. Ah, uh, you it's do. Not an easy process. You know, that's what we were saying there before. I mean, how long have you been making music now? Uh, I've been making music since 2004. And it was my mate, uh, Barry. Uh, he gave me, the guy used to run Substance Underground. And uh, he gave me a lot, he was into it, and he gave me a laptop with reason, sound backs on it, just went, here, there you go. Uh, you don't need to give me, a, you, you don't need to give me the laptop back, but if you get a new one, give me it back, but it's yours mm-hmm. forever, if you, what, right, just to get into it. What a legend. And I, and Aye. he got me into it, and that was it. Um, and I was I was absolutely hooked though. From, from, from day one, that was it. That was all I did. Do you know what I mean? And then, what kind of happened was eventually it took me a few years and at the beginning my music was quite it's quite novel it was all quite kind of nut stuff like mm-hmm. like I've got breakbeat tracks like sampling uh, what do you call it Robocop and all this just crazy yeah. stuff fun but stuff I, as I just experimenting yeah. but as it got on it it got more and more refined and then I wrote this track and it was kind of when the electro kind of housey sort of techie house stuff was was really popular and I wrote this track and I, knew, I can't remember the name of the label right now but I nearly signed this track up to the label uh, and I went to defrag my hard drive and my hard drive exploded and I lost the track and that's when I just went went, went into the bank borrowed like three four grand and just what and then bought myself a, a, a Mac, all my studio gear and that was it and I invested in it and that was from then that I really started took it serious, to, took it serious. but I mean I'm not joking, I would literally get up at 8 o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. and like my, my, my ex-girlfriend at the time would go to work, right, and she would come back and I'd still be working the music and she would go to bed and I'd put the headphones on. Aye, you know what I mean? I'm talking for 9 in the morning. The, she would, the, the, the first day that I got it, actually, the first day I got it, um, I think it, like, so I got it at night and then I woke up in the morning, it was 8 o'clock, I sat down and was working the music and I, I never moved all day, didn't get a drink, didn't eat anything. And I'm sitting, I'm going, jeez, look at the time. And it was 4 o'clock in the morning, I'd been on it 20 hours straight and I hadn't moved. And I was just glued to it. I never even, didn't even realise the time had passed. Do you know what I mean? Wow. I need that, I need wow. that for I'm losing weight. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, the wrong I was, I was the smelling too <laughs> fresh. I need to start looking after myself here, man. Christ. See, see, back in those days, what, what a lot of producers obviously struggle with is like, they, th- they make money right. and, and learning the skill. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, because right. you've, you've got to... Because that's a lot of time you need to put in here. I, well, I, see, I used like, to be in construction, right? So what I would do is I would, I would work two days a week doing construction and then the rest of the time I'd be in the studio so basically I, I, I took a financial hit 
and lived a certain lifestyle so that three three days out of the week or three or whatever spare other spare days where I could just work in music all the time mm -hmm. and that's how I could put in those hours because I kind of made that sacrifice. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The important thing being though that those hours need to be put in. They do to they do. a level. It's it's with, with anything. With with absolutely anything. Yeah. My, yeah. I mean, my mum she plays the saxophone and. Uh, it was, uh, it was actually Ryan that used to play it, and then he was nearly making an effort. And she went, you know what? If you're not going to do it, I'm going to learn it. Mm -hmm. And she was literally on that thing. I'm talking ev like like doing practice it five hours a day, just constantly. And then just slowly but surely, you just hear her getting better and Aye. better. And then she's in the, all these bands and everything. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's that and she's dedication. number one. Aye, now she's number one. <laughs> number one, mum. Uh, <laughs> Aye. So a very musical background already yeah, then, sort yeah. of. Um, what kind of led you down the rabbit hole of getting into techno? What, uh, what inspired you to go on that route instead a, of something else? It was, a, it was a funny route. What had happened was, it was because uh, I, so I grew up in the East End of Glasgow. And uh, see all the guys that were at my school, they were all just running about and they were into fighting and just, David what, Duke Street. Just, uh, just all that noise. And I, I originally came from, uh, I lived in Balachs, right? So when I came, I wasn't really, I wasn't used to that kind of culture and I wasn't into that at all. So I, I'd went to a summer club and there was guys that were maybe in second or third year at school. I was in primary seven and they were in second and third year and they were all into going to the resis and they do metro tapes and everything. And I met them and they were all about the music. And I thought, no, that's what I want to be into rather than just running about and causing Aye. causing grief. And that was that was hooked. I'm still friends with all those guys. Uh, I've still got some of the old rave tapes and all that mm. as well. So, but that's kind of how I get into it. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, I think, I, I mean, I think I've been. I've been kind of playing about with decks literally since I'm primary seven, about nine or ten years old. I was like 89, I get into it. Do you know what I mean? Which is just terrifying now. Wow. How long ago it was, man? It's a while then. Because right. so I, I remember my I remember my mum saying, What do you want for your Christmas? And uh -huh. I was like, I want a set of decks. And I'm like, she's like, What's that? Uh -huh. And she says, We can't afford that. So they bought me one one year and then I had to wait the whole year to get the next one. <laughs> that must have been pain. At least, at least you can still <laughs> just my one deck. <laughs> 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 At least you can still Just listen to music. Between my gamma roughneck and one deck. <laughs> what kind of deck was it? It was a Sound Lab D DLP 1R. And then eventually, my mum actually, she bought me my first set of techniques. So, because I'd, I'd went... I'd went to a club, uh, I, actually I got I got a, a residency at a place called Tin Pan Alley and I'd been using the DLP 1Rs and now everybody knows belt drives and direct drives, there's a completely different way to DJ, right? And when I went into the club and I went to use them, I'm like, whoa, it's completely uh, different and I explained to, to my mum how like, it was just so much tougher and she just went out and bought me a set. Aye, so aye, really. She sounds so supportive. Aye, that's, that's legend. Aye, that's brilliant. She's great. You know, that's brilliant and then obviously taking it to that gig, it's like, you know, aye, this is what I'm doing now. She, you know she, I mean? she loved it. She was in her element. She was great. Aye, that's great. Did you find you had a group of friends that, like, obviously you met those guys plus they're a wee bit older Right. So straight away, it's like you you feel a bit cooler when you've got a couple of older pals to listen to music. It, was, it? it really just generally was about the passion of the music. But even then, I was way more passionate about it than then. They were into yeah. it, but I was just instantly... You realised. Oh, on a different, completely different. They liked it. I was like, whoa. Like, mm -hmm. I remember just sitting thinking, imagine just sitting with a set of turntables and a bag of records and just on a Sunday. And, that's, and I thought, that is the best way to spend your time ever. I was mm -hmm. just... I was hypnotised by that, you know what that's I mean? That's amazing. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a similar story where DJs, though, like, do big things. Like, they've, they've had that spark lit at some point and, like, and, and at that and point... And they're running with it. Hooked. I think, it's, the first, I think it's one of the first things that people come across where they can actually be creative. Mm -hmm. And when you're DJing at the beginning, it's, it's the first step to you. It's like, because DJing, is, it's almost... Depends which style you do, but I used to always like mixing tracks really... So, I, say I've had a track rather than waiting right to the end, I like to mix a track in halfway through. And you're almost creating... A a new vibe with the with the music you're putting together so it's like the first step to being creative and then mm. naturally then now everybody's starting to produce music as well but yeah. DJing's definitely the, seems to be the first step for a lot of people so you were DJing first then DJing first aye, aye. so I think uh, you know you get producers that produce first then DJ I aye, think aye. you can hear that in think music so? I think so I think so aye, aye. Like, I think even when I was DJing first and then I was producing right. when I'm producing I'm kind of thinking about a DJ set that's why I make a little bit I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about which that which is important you know? as well I think so you've you've taken it from DJing Aye. 
you know, you've got into it, you've finally waited a year, got the second turntable, so you aye, can aye, actually, aye. so you can start actually mixing. I got the mixer during the year, brilliant, the right. Maplin mixer, by oh, the way. Brilliant. Got off my mate for 25 quid. Nice, <laughs> nice. <a> belter. <laughs> so there we go, put the piece together. So talk us from there, what was the next steps in terms of getting yourself out there? And, well, to, and be, to be honest, it was just kind of what most people go through, just doing nights in Glasgow, my mates were putting on nights, and I was just podding away and DJing, just kind of, it was really everything started changing once I started producing the music but I mean that was in 2004 but that real, that really it did take I mean I started in 2004 right I signed to Soma in 2008 right in February and then I, th- and I signed to Cocoon in 2012 I think mm-hmm. and then then that led to then it was a drum code which was like 2013 and then that was when I started really making a living out of it so from literally from starting and in 2004, it literally took me 10 years to get to that point. Um, but it's funny because the thing is, I remember when I signed to Soma, it was a, it was a really big deal. It was a, a, an absolute institution, you know? Absolutely. So massive. But I remember Glenn saying to me at the beginning, he's like, like, I mean, I'm not being negative, but like, just keep your expectations like re- realistic. Just because you've signed it, like, you have no made it. <laughs> and Aye. he was so right. <laughs> yeah. Because I, had, it was so, I think the thing is as well, I'm glad I didn't know how much further I had to... To yeah, go, do you know what so I mean? True. So I mean, how do you think that transcends into like nowadays for the for the next Harvey McKay's and the ones that are coming up and even you know for some of our guys that are on their journey and right. trying to grow their name and stuff is like how does that how do you think that works now? Does it it is it just a case of hitting the good labels? Because even then in 2008, if he's like that, look, keep your expectations low just because you've had a good label doesn't really mean much yet. Aye. So how Nowadays, you... it's not enough. Because there's not... so much music and there's so many artists. You really need to do something to that stand, stand out. out yeah. That stand out and build something. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So get just getting that record deal is not enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it's... Uh, and, and the thing is, there's so much music and there's so many people into so it as many. well, you know what I mean? So many. thing is, I mean, it's great that it's so accessible and that everybody's into it, but then at the same point in time, Saturates. I think, how hard is it for people to sort of maybe break through? Don't get me wrong, if the music's strong enough, then it will eventually, it's going to come to surface. Yeah. I mean, what I used to say to a lot of people um, when they're trying to start out, um, one of the bits of advice I used to give is I would say, so say, say you want to get on a certain big label. Now that guy might be completely inaccessible to you, right? But if you go, right, who's on his label? Now, does that artist have a ha- have another mm-hmm. smaller label? Or mm-hmm. do you know an artist that's released on that smaller label? And it's like a stepping stone to the mm-hmm. to the, to the connecting to that person, do you Absolutely. know what I mean? So that, and that's kind of what happened with me, do you know what I mean? I ended up doing, I did a remix for my mate on an, uh, uh, Rich Jones on, uh, uh, what do you call it, Eight Side the Dice Allen's label. I did a remix for that, and then eventually, then I did the uh, the EP for for Alan Fitzpatrick label as well. And then, cause uh, cause Alan and Adam are tight, then that meant then I was in Adam's radar. And then, I mean, it took a long time after it, but it's the kind of it's kind of natural kind of route. It's Aye. amazing, isn't it? It's just networking, isn't it? It is networking. It is networking. It's but the thing know. is, you've got to be genuine as well, because people. The thing is, if uh, I think a lot of people, I mean, I think a lot of people, they, they can tell when you're not genuine, do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got, it's got to be organic as well. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll be pushing and pushing and pushing for something and you'll not get it. It'll, it'll, it's probably going to come to you. I found yeah. any time I was trying to get something, it Aye. wouldn't happen. Once that. I went, all right, do you know what? Like, I mean, I'd released, I'd released on drum code. Uh, it was a, on a compilation, a track called Supercell on the drum code compilation. And then I was trying to get another EP for that, uh, uh, Alan, uh, Adam, sorry, for ages. And uh, I, I, nothing was fitting. And I went, I oh, stuff that. And I was sort of trying to make stuff that would maybe suit. And I just went, stuff that. And I gave up. And then I wrote Lost. Um, and I didn't think that suited drum code at all. And I was just, I think, I'll just send him it anyway. Mm-hmm. And I literally sent him it. And he, I think he replied in a bit. I'm no joking about two minutes. He's like, have you sent any of else this year? I went, no, I went, oh, don't, don't, I'll take it. I'll wow. take it right away. And it's so, so rather than me trying to get it, I just went and done my own thing and then it worked out. I think that's a massive message Huge. about doing your own thing. Aye. It's like, be true to yourself. You can't make any other style of music other than what you want to make. And the other thing as well is, it's like, is what, what I tend to find as well is there's loads of other artists that I like. I, I, I find one of the ways that people develop is you'll have artists that you really, really like and 
subconsciously you're sort of trying you end up sort of emulating what they do but you don't do it the same way you, that they do it and it ends up becoming your thing Aye. do you know what I mean because it's got your twist mm -hmm. do you know what I mean so there's so yeah. loads of artists that I like and I'll, and I'll be like oh can I love that vibe and I'll try and create it and it won't be that but no. it'll, it'll be yeah. do you Your know what I mean scope on it Aye. so let's get into some artists you like who do you, who are you liking at the moment oh um, obviously my brother um, uh, my mate Gary Beck as well his stuff's just insane slamming absolutely insane he just sent me he's got that signature Aye. sound didn't he guys honestly just send that's what I used to say to Gary I said like <laughs> every now and again you just send me a tune that just makes me go <laughs> I'm giving up. <laughs> Aye, I'm, I'm giving up, man. I'm, I get the tools out. I'm, you know what I mean? It's uh, construction. <laughs> he, he, he sent me. He sent me a track like to test out. Was it uh, last week? Uh, and I played at the Drum Code Festival. And see, see when I put up. Actually, when I played it on Friday in Vienna, and just see the energy in it, man. It's just good reaction for the. Do you know what the one thing I quite like about Gary's music is? Is that um, he's like he. he he can play a lot of heavy stuff, but he can play a quite, a, quite a lot of funky, disco-y, techno -y vibes, and it can mix in with these heavy sets. Mm -hmm. So he can play stuff that would maybe seem slightly more accessible, but the way mm -hmm. it slots into all the other stuff, it kind of generally fits the picture. Um, the other artist that I've just recently been getting right into is Aphex Twin. Uh, I I used to just know he's really heavy gabber, heavy like the yeah. really old stuff, yeah. the really the really heavy stuff, and that's all I thought he was about. I had no idea, and my mate went, "Have you listened to this?" And he sent me the album, and I was just blown. As the ambient works, there's a few different ones. See the textures that guy gets are unbelievable. It's the way every single note resonates. And do 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 do. You know, there's no thin mm -hmm. part in, it, in any of these sounds. It's it's almost listening to him. It's made me think about textures in a way that I never yeah. thought about yeah, about yeah, how yeah. thick. And the guy's an absolute genius. Well, he stayed true to the game. He's oh, never oh, sold out oh, or anything like that. He has, right he has stayed completely done what he wanted with it didn't matter what anybody said. He the, was creepy back in the day. Aye, aye, you know I mean? and all his videos and all that. So creepy, man. Aye. But this, I mean, the thing, the, the, the thing is with, with, with Aphex Twin, um, I mean, there was actually a video that I watched of online, I can't find it anymore, and it was a video of him writing tracks, and rather than like having an arrangement page and all that, he's just entering code. It's like literal random binary code and all that, and then he'll be like, hit, and it's like some odd old program where you need to enter this code, and then these sounds come out, and you're like, Jeez, guys, I'm just a genius, do you know what aye, I mean? You it's, get guys that do things a bit differently. Like, they're more computer, bit, aye, aye. computer code kind of background. Like, you know, is that James Holden? I've seen aye, a video. James Holden's insane as he, well. The first... Uh, they were like the kind of... See, for me, sorry to interrupt, see, nah. but see, James, Hol James Holden, Nathan Fake, to me, they were almost a wee bit like the kind of Pink Floyd of the electronic music scene. Pioneers. Series. Well, Pioneers, they were so... I mean, some of James... James Holden did a re remix of uh, a track by Andrew Kamari called right. Safari. I don't know if you've heard that. What a tune that is, Aye. and honestly, when you listen to it, when I listen to a tune like that, there's parts that I'm like, What is he even doing? I like, I have no <laughs> idea what he's doing, and I think that's it's it's amazing. amazing. So, James Holden, that future music, I think it was an old, old video way right. back, and look, the program just looks like dots and code. Aye, and then he's banging this old Casio. <laughs> thing he's like aye this usually works and he's hitting it he's like oh there it is there and you're like man what is this guy oh but it's yeah, the same, like, like i think was it when um when uh, nathan fake i think what well, i'd seen uh, uh, james holden do the soma school mm -hmm. and he did a, a like a kind of an interview and a talk and all that and it was it was really interesting because he came on and they're like oh james, everybody border community james holden and they kind of was like i kind of don't really yeah. know what to say man yeah, yeah. but as they kind of <laughs> pushed him and poked him and the answer, some of the answers, he would just start speaking. You'd be like, Pfft. "Do you yeah, know what I mean?" The he guy knows was, his stuff. He really knows his stuff, and it was quite funny. We we're talking about like uh, gear and stuff as well. That like Nathan Fake. I'm sure somebody asked him like, "What kind of stuff does Nathan use?" And he's like, "I think he just uses like Cubase and like loads of old plugins." <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, "How the hell did they get these sounds?" You know what I mean? It's because they really understand yeah. and again, synthesis, and they can really push the sounds totally. And it's down to that timing thing as yeah. well. They put that weird time in them, themselves in uh -huh. a room locked away, like Reaching just. Because I, I mean, apparently with with, with Border Community, with with James Holden, apparently Nathan Fake loved Border Community, and I think he wrote like this EP, and he just sent it to James Holden, and he went, "I amazing," and just signed him up. And Nathan's like, "I can't believe I just signed to Border Community." <laughs> but I mean, I mean, what was the track? There's a track. It's not for everybody's taste, but there's a track called Overdraft that he did. Right. Have you have you heard that? I don't know. No, and it's like it's this weird drum, like really fast kind of drum and bassy breaky track but it's mm. almost like you when you listen to it, it's almost like 
he's showing off. He's going, look, wait, see what I can do. And you just watch it develop it. And all, all, all the all the sounds are kind of bending in and out mm. each other. It's just this wild shit. But ah, he's just incredible, man. Yeah. So who would be your, your, your ideal stellar top three producers you'd like to play with or play back to back with on a set? I don't know, man. That's a tricky question. Aye, right, man. I'm going to throw aye, it at you. Oh, throw aye, well, obviously, so I said it, it affects twin. Um, so I don't really know who else, man. Yeah. I, honestly, uh, you put me in the spot. Well, I'm sure there's a few guys that would like to collab with you anyway. Oh, you know aye, I mean? aye. Like... See, see, the thing is, I've not, like, I, I did a collab with Carla Leo before, but I think apart from that, that's the only, me and Ryan, are, that Ryan's brother, the yeah. only person I, other person I've worked with. And I think Ryan is the only person that I've worked with in the studio. That works for you there. Well, and it works for you. Right. Aye, aye, so... Is that something you you want to keep then? Like you're not not doing too many collaborations with other people, or no? I mean, the, th the, the thing is, right? To this it, is, it works out well because obviously I've got my thing, we've got Alias, yeah. we're pushing that, uh, and like that seems like it's getting a bit of traction. And then obviously Ryan's doing his own thing as well because he's 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 enjoying the more kind of strip back, tougher sound, so he can kind of express himself that way. I can do my thing, and then we've got this this other outlet as well, and it's mm -hmm. good because the thing is as well because it's so. Because the alias thing is so different to what I do, then a lot of the stuff that's happening in that then bleeds in and then it kind of makes my music more for yeah. a wee bit as well. So yeah. my music's definitely changed. I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was kind of struggling for a while. I was like, I just couldn't. I just didn't know where I wanted to go. I knew I didn't like what I, I knew. I was fed up with what I was doing, and but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then when we started the the, the alias thing. Um, I think we started the alias thing, we wrote Pentatonic and then we signed it to Adam, he signed it up right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the first tune I wrote after that was Black Dolphin and I right. think it's because when I, we get in the studio, right. I got inspired again and then bang, do you know what I mean? After all that time of struggling, I had a kind of fresh perspective. I wrote Black Dolphin and then I wrote Cover Up, which is the B-side track. Yeah. I really like that track because yeah. it's quite musical and the synths and everything in it. Yeah. Um, and I think I think it's probably because of doing the other project. Mm. I think it's a healthy thing, you know. Definitely. Do you feel your sounds going more musical, more chordy just now with the with the drones and strings sort of pads and stuff? Well, that, I mean, see the see the thing is, this is what me and Ryan always. It's like it's almost like see sometimes it's like sometimes the music kind of tells you where it wants to go because mm. like we 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 joke them when we're writing a tune. You're like you might say, oh, I want that to do that and that. And the tune will go, nah, I don't want that. It doesn't. Aye. The tune tells you. You put <laughs> yeah. it somewhere, and the tune goes, I. That's the way I want it to be. Do you know what I mean? Ryan mm. says that's always some Jedi shit. Do you know what I mean? The nice. tune will and tell you where it wants <laughs> to go. Do you know what I mean? Much to learn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's in the hands of the gods, isn't it? Uh, it's like, it is. You it know, totally let it do its thing. It's like the creative gods have got it now. You know, uh, they're away with it. It's amazing, but it's so so complex and depth in depth really when it comes to productions you know what I mean and like, I've been working with these guys for years just yeah. watching the processes I don't actually produce but I kind of know what I'm doing because Aye. I've just been surrounded for so long Right. so it's like just hearing other people's processes and stuff it's right. like it's really quite exciting just right. to hear Aye. different Aye. things Aye. and to be inspired and then come out with an absolute nailer like Black Dolphin, aye, man. Aye, aye, aye. It's just mental, man. Like that aye. thing. So the name tells you, were telling us about oh, the just, name. I was watching it, it was like some documentary and it was on the prison, Black Dolphin prison, and it's like, it's mental. It, it's literally, I think it takes four hours to get there and it's in the middle of nowhere, it's snowing and all that, and it looks like hell on earth, do you know what I mean? But it's like, it's with all the most twisted murderer and all that kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. I just thought, Kind of the dark vibe suited the tune. <laughs> Plus, people were like, "What white dolphin?" Aye. I like a name that people will go. What does that mean? And Why would they call it? Look it up. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I mean it'd be amazing if it's just that tune plays in their sound system every day. <laughs> <laughs> right, put it on. <laughs> no, that's mental, man. Honestly, it's, it's like it's an amazing thing. I think you should. Put a wee bit of thought into your names. Do you know what right, I mean? You I, totally no, should. I, I, yeah, yeah, that's why you, you de definitely. Because this is the, I remember there was one, one of my friends as well, John Gallic. used to run nights. Uh, John Virtue is his DJ name. Used to run nights in uh, the Sound House. And uh, when I'd I'd kind of just uh, when I got my Mac, we were at school together, but we weren't really friends. But then we kind of just hooked up because I seen he signed a track to Pert Tracks, and then we sort of started hanging out. 
And uh, oh god, what was I, what was I talking about there, John? I totally forgot. Him. Oh no, forgot. That happens, happens at what times. Was there? Oh, I'll pop back to you. Fart, right, I'll come back to me. But, How did we go into that though? What was well, it? Well, we were obviously talking about the black dolphin thing, and then uh, I'm changing that names. That was it. Was the names. Name. So basically, what happened was. I mean, we started writing music, and I remember John, he was like, he's going, mate, your music's good, but your name's a fucking <laughs> shit. I think one was like called Cute the Bass. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I need, I need to get my act together, do you know what I mean? Pure cheesemonger, so. <laughs> Moving forward, then aye. you had a drink called Killer Mayonnaise. Yeah, I well, I so, uh, <laughs> I was hungry. <laughs> now, see, one thing, have you, in terms of like genre, right, uh-huh. have you always just been making what you've made, or... See if you've got to a point where you think, I kind of want to change direction. What do you do? Do you rebrand? Do you change your name? Do you keep your name? What do you suggest? I've never, I've never done, I've never kind of done the pseudonym thing actually and just come up with a project. But actually, I've got a project just now that I've been working on and it's because I've been listening to a lot of the FX twin stuff and they kind of, I've been getting right into breaky electro, like, like 90s breaky electro. Mm-hmm. Like there's a track, I don't know if you've called uh, Demen- Dementia by Morphology. Right. I don't know if you've heard that. Uh, just uh, like it was my mate Ronan, he got me into that stuff, and I was just being totally hooked. And then I've been like, so what? What happened was I'd be see if I've been if I, if I was writing techno and I was get stuck, I'd go, well, do you know what? Fuck, I'm not getting anywhere. I might as well just play a bit with that. And it came really, really naturally. One of the tracks I've wrote, I've still not finished it yet. Because here's the thing: whenever I'm doing that, I think God, I should be doing what pays the bills rather than messing about with this. But I've just got I've got quite a lot sort of arranged and sorted out. So I think I'm going to get my head back in it. But it's kind of a, I'll send you over, it's a kind of breaky electro thing, but I mean, I sent it to one of my mates and he's like, I think that's one of the best things you've written in 10 years. Do you know, it's my, and it was my first bash at it, but it's great because I get to use loads of sounds and, and machines that I want them. because they don't usually fit my yeah. techno sets, yeah, yeah. but it just means I've got all this sonic palette that I'm like, oh, I can use all that now. Do you know what I mean? And then again, that'll somehow bleed into what that'll I'm doing in the tech. techno stuff. Aye. Aye. That's Plus, it's person. getting you really enthused when you're in the studio, which yep. is inspiring you for other ideas, it's, it's which the most leads fun to I've other had. things. Exactly, and you need to do that. You need to. I, it's the most fun I've had. When I wrote that tune, I just couldn't stop listening to it. I'm like, oh, I was just, do you know that way? You're just right in it, do you know what I mean? And I think it's fresh. And that was one of the other things as well I was going to say with obviously we're doing the alias. The thing I quite, I quite like about the alias is because it's a new thing, I get really excited about it. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for ages, and don't get me wrong, there's, it's still great fun and but you get used to it, but things become normalised. Mm-hmm. But see, because Alias is a new thing and it's a new challenge, new challenge yeah. I'm getting a buzz again like I used to get years ago because yeah. it's a whole new thing, do you know what I mean? So it's always good to have that kind of charge. Yeah, it is interesting, you know, we've been discussing that as well. well. This is why I'm bringing it up because, like, well, Stephen's kind of in a bit of a transition moment at the moment right. and, like, uh, the first track he's just done there with Lindsay Green. That's right. like, aye, aye, I'd seen the video. Aye, aye. Who was it ended up playing it? Salter. 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 Aye, aye. aye. And Ibiza. Aye, I was seen. actually there, but I wasn't there. I was in another part of the island, oh, so you? I wish I was there. Like, oh, that's like, a gutter, you know, man. Was a, was a but gutter. then, you know, so it's like, you know, for us, that's one of the things we've been toying with because Stephen's built his name in a certain place. Right. Now he's kind of moving and we're like, is it an alien? does he just keep Stephen Kirkwood Aye. and it's like we're just trying to pick everybody's brain man you know it's like yeah, and yeah, it's one of those ones so like, is it yeah. different kind of music that you're making so it's, what's, it's, what's it's, it's always been techie it's always been right. a bit of progressive in there and obviously the trance elements right. so it doesn't really you know there's not a lot of sense. It's not too in, far away. It's not too far away from, you know, techno, especially right. where techno's at just now. Right, aye, aye, Because techno's very melodic so you can right. kind of almost aye. get away with it but it's just sometimes, you know, you get there's a lot of snobbery sometimes and like, you know, Different yeah. promoters, different artists. I might yeah. not want to work with you because of that or because of this. Aye, so so what you're saying is because of the kind of music you're starting to make now, you're thinking, should I come up with a kind of whole Fresh name thing. and branding so that people aren't sort of disregard me because uh-huh. I'm associated with a, a sound that doesn't aye. fit what that their night's about. I know what you mean, aye, you know, I think you've got a point there because some people can be really close-minded, you know. Sometimes, but, I, but whereas I'm not, I've, uh, I've, aye, no, I've, totally. I've loved right across the board, like even electro and all that. All and, music, it's, the thing yeah. is, it's, as long as it's good, it doesn't really matter it's what it is it's, it, the day. it's one of these ones right see no matter I mean do you know I love Frank Sinatra right mm-hmm. I absolutely love Frank Sinatra right and that's one of those examples of no matter whether what, what what kind of music you're into right if somebody is unbelievable at it you'll like it do you mm-hmm. know what I mean because they're that good that it, it, it transcends the genre do you yeah. know what I mean mm-hmm. and that's ultimately what you should be aiming for as an Aye. artist isn't it it's Aye. like you know not really pinpointing it to it's breaking boundaries it's like doing your thing you know 
And again, it's staying true to yourself in it. So, I mean, I, I feel it's good, you know, it's good to kind of think about it because it's not as if, like, you're going in, like, a drum and bass direction or, like, mm. something that's, like, if a promoter was looking, it's like, I don't know how to book him because Aye. I've known him for that, but, like, techno isn't a million miles away whatsoever. For, Plus, for you're seeing even happen, guys so. at Alan Fitzpatrick dropping old trans classics Aye. and all Aye. that, Aye. you know, which I think is... that's the thing that, like, I have kind of noticed over the past few years you're getting... DJs that can kind of experiment and starting mm -hmm. to throw in some kind of random right, stuff that you would expect. No, no, it's good because it mixes it up. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. One of, one of the things I do find about the dance music industry that I think is quite negative is I think a lot of people, as they go on, they get into this very small box of what they think is good and everything else is shit and, it's, and it becomes yeah. a snobbery thing yeah. and it's really, really divisive. It separates Absolutely. everybody and the whole point of this scene it's is for everybody to come together and enjoy themselves and see people like, oh, that's just fucking... Rubbish. The thing is, I mean, the only thing that I'm against <laughs> is like, so, say, say like EDM, right? I'm not, it's not that I've got anything against it, but the reason that, that, that it leaves a bit of taste is because a lot of it is made... Uh, for business, do you for know money, what I mean? that's financial. Yeah. That's about the only thing. But apart from that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody can, as long as you're happy, you need to go and do what you want to do. Aye, definitely. Do you aye. Know what I mean, no matter how you find it. Yeah, aye. absolutely. You know, it is a good place that the the dance music industry is in just now, and you're yeah. just seeing across the board people playing whatever they want to play. You know, and, and that's really what it should be. Well, I guess. Bit. I mean, Salt is a bit of that at the moment, aye. isn't he? I mean, he's. I mean, he's dropping like. Uh, Caught Nigel and all that. I mean, he's going absolutely mental. mental on some of his sets. Uh, and then he's going into some industrial techno at 133, uh, three, man. A, and oh, that's good. That's amazing. He's, he's, he's got a flexibility no, diversity, to do that. Diversity, do you know what I mean? Again, but some DJs get a name for doing that and they can get away with doing it. Whereas maybe if I dropped Caught Nigel, my career would be over. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the just some guitars. <laughs> Den, De, Dennis, Dennis drops it and everybody's uh, like, that's amazing. I drop it. People are like, what's he doing <laughs> man oh, you know what I mean I know. Yes. Right, I know you need I'm... to choose those wild cards carefully yeah. Aye, well that's true again it is, it's, it's how you build your name so, so see right again a lot of our listeners are you know are young uh -huh. a lot of them are, are trying to get into the music yep. industry they're trying to become DJs so from Harvey Mackay aye, a lot aye. of people respect you what, what could be a few tips for some young people try to break through now that you seem 2018 compared to when you broke through. Uh, right. Well, for a start, it's hard. It's going to be harder for people to get noticed because there's so many more people. Yeah. I think. I think you need to be doing it for the right reasons, right? Mm -hmm. I think if you just want to become a famous DJ or you're or, already you're, in it for the wrong reasons. You're already in it for the wrong reasons. You should. You're going to succeed if you're in it for the passion of the music because that will try and send in that work. One of the other things, one of the other bit, good bits of advice, I think I would give. I've, I've said it to Soma Schools a few times. Is whenever you write music, I always try and tell anybody when they're working in tracks at the beginning, even if you don't like the tune and you're struggling don't scrap it and start something else finish it because every time you get to a track and you're struggling uh, and you and you're, you're forced to get the track to the end you'll learn some new te technique or trick or something that you can add to your toolbox mm -hmm. so if you just get to go you go ah, i don't like that tune or i'm struggling with it, and you move on you've not learned anything mm -hmm. so finish every right. track even Finish if it. you're going ah, I'm, I'm not into this just finish it and then mm. i think that that, that that makes a massive difference because that's what i, I finished every tune I think I've got about 350 reason folders in my computer wow. and I've finished every single one of them not to a really good standard but I would get to the point where I go right that start middle and it's done do you know what I mean and yeah. then you learn from that yeah a lot of people do struggle with actually getting tracks over the line as well so yeah. you know it's not easy mate no, it's, I mean not. the thing is I still find it really hard I still battle it this is the thing people think I mean sometimes you'll be working on a track <laughs> and it'll just be battling and battling and battling yeah I mean I've got a track that I'm working on just now and it's got this really amazing kind of melodic trancey pad in, in, in the middle. And it sounds dynamite when it drops into the, the beats. It sounds really good. But I know subconsciously from the beginning to end, everything surrounding that mm -hmm. is just not cutting it. Not and I'm, But it's, it's, it's sort of there, but mm -hmm. it's not there. And, and it's just, whereas, as I say, that the track that me and Ryan were working on the other day, we literally come up with a few parts and you just instantly know there's going to be no issues and that mm -hmm. thing's going to write itself. Yeah. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? I love that we say and write itself. You it know, does. To get to that point, you know, that's, that's a the great thing. The parts are that strong, you mm -hmm. don't go, it, it just it unfolds in front of yeah. you almost effortlessly. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> no, you know no. I mean? You I also find like you find inspiration in making a mistake as well. You hear aye. a wee sound and you're like, I've thought oh, of a melody. I've thought of a melody. 
You know what I mean? That happens uh, all the time. Ha- the jamming accidents. process, do you know what I mean? Well, one, one of the other things is I, I would say as well is it's like, it's almost like when you first start writing music, it's almost like when you first dri- start driving a car. See, when you get your first driving lesson, you're kind of in the car and the car's kind of driving and you're kind of going, you're kind of rolling along the road, kind of giving it like that. But after a while, then you yeah, are control in control that. of the car. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like that we write music at the beginning. At the beginning, I find people are stumbling across a lot of things and they're going, oh, they'll just find a sound and it'll, it'll lead them here, it'll lead them there. But as you get more experienced, you understand the equipment and the plugins and everything mm-hmm. a lot more and you're starting to really be in control of the sounds that come out of mm-hmm. them, then you really develop your own sound. So rather than stumbling across things, you're really creating your own sound. Yeah. And then that's when the, kinda, the whole artist thing starts to sort of come about that you become yourself, if you get what I mean. But yeah. you really need to understand... Yeah what you're con- control what you're using mm. see i really like the the, the tip on advice. pushing it over the line because mm. i think see especially in today's sort of yeah. culture like with netflix and all that Aye. it's like you watch something for two minutes ah, that's a shite right? i'm putting something Aye. else on right and it's like that actual attention span is so important to have in music uh, production is. because you're you're missing out on all the learning by pushing through stuff you can't be bothered doing i, I well that, I mean? this is the thing that, that, that that's the thing that i think is really really important i find i think is as i see it, the harder it is to finish then that's the more reason you should finish it because exactly. every time that you so see you get to a track and you can't get it for there to there and you fight it and you you get it finished you'll maybe learn some Massive technique, lesson, yeah. right? And every time you do that, you've got all these different techniques and tricks. So whenever you get to a tune, you go, well, well how am I going to do that? I'll try that. That doesn't want to try that. And you've got that, but you need to be finishing them. Do you know what I mean? That's amazing. Mm, brilliant advice. That's amazing. That'll, that'll really resonate uh, with, with a lot of the guys out there. So I can see Craig nodding in the background. He's like, <laughs> oh, <"Okay>, yes. <laughs> I think a, a probably good place to start wrapping up. Yeah, but yeah. Just, for the kind of geekier people out there, right. I don't know if you want to go down that route and sort of like asking favorite plugin. Aye, aye. I mean, what are you using? Favorite plugin? Uh, the lobby like that. No, I'm downloading that man. Can't buy it anymore, man. It's actually F Expansion Guru. It's a wee drum. What uh, a name! It's a wee uh, drum synthesizer, uh, and it's like a kind of closed unit. Mm-hmm. But uh, so you basically just draw, and it's like a like a wee drum machine. And, but the thing is. So say you draw in your kick drum every four bars, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're drawing it in and you load up a kick. Each individual layer that you you load up, you can completely uh, tailor. So you can pitch, filter, pan, effect on every single layer. And that was kind of the beginnings of me figuring out how to get really amazing kicks by, rather than looking for a really good kick, making a kick. Mm-hmm. So like getting a really fat bottom end and then filtering that off and then finding a kick with a nice mid and then layering that in. But the thing is, you can't just have loads of kicks on top of each other. Each separate kick has to do a different job. Yep. So then you're getting a kick that's really well-rounded. And wow. the, uh, F Expansion Guru was... I mean, I remember I got F Expansion Guru and I, for about two weeks, I think I was writing about a tune a day. I was just firing them out. Um, and it's, it's a great wee... It's a great, I mean, I've got a new one called Geist. Uh, I've heard of that actually but I don't know man it seems just to have a lot more bells and whistles on it that I really don't think you need I look at it and it gives me a sore head and I look at Guru and I'm like it's just simple and it works do you know what I mean so I, I love it love the expansion Guru eh? mm, what nice. about like for pads or like you know maybe the synth sounds like I mean I, I've got I mean all the all the normal ones I've got Serum Silent uh God, I can't even remember. I've got that new one you're working on, you're using Serum, aren't you? Serum, I, I find that really good. I find that quite it's, a di- diverse it's one. As well, that one. I, it's, it's a good synth. I mean, because um, we were we were struggling to come up with something. I thought, you know what, I'll just buy that and then I'll get his, maybe get get his inspired. And as soon as I got it right away, I think it was the, the track that we did in Drum Code, the event. Mm-hmm. That slow silence, there's about maybe four or five different ones playing all the melodies. Right. As soon as we bought that, it was, was great, you know what I mean? But I don't track, as I say, at the beginning, Everybody will have about a million plugins and yeah, use it too. But after yeah. a while, you just you narrow it down and you have a very small toolkit of what you use to get the job done. That's that's cool. One more question then. So Aye. see, see when you are, I guess, in the process, are you Aye. aware of the mix and the master as you're creating ideas? Are you, are you almost. It's a kind of subconscious thing. It's like so. See when you're writing music, there's a lot of things going on. Like I mean, you're thinking of the arrangement, you're thinking of the sonic palette of it, and it's kind of just. As your experience grows, you just kind of slowly but surely, it just comes naturally and you're just subconsciously changing it the whole time. I I, I, I said it in one of the interv- other interviews as well that I did a while back and it was like, I almost described the best, like when you're writing a track, it's almost like you're, 
you, you're painting a picture with sound and mm-hmm. you're trying to fill in all the frequencies but give nice bits of space between mm-hmm. it you know what I mean yep so you're, you're, as you're going through the process you're like adding reverb you know you're, yep. you're kind of building towards the final product yep. subconsciously with each thing you kind of add and one, one, one of the other things I try and do as well is is like a lot of so if I track see if I track it's, it's maybe is missing a certain frequency rather than boosting the EQ I'll try and find an element to add that fills that frequency okay. so then trying to boost what it's missing mm-hmm. add something to fill that gap okay mm, that's interesting because I've heard guys say no boost the EQ rather than turn up that channel so like say I've got it and I think that hi-hat's not really popping enough mm-hmm. I'll layer like a really sharp like synthesised hat like off a wee like drum machine or something right, okay. like that just in the background so I'm trying to boost that one up I'll get some so that, so that hi-hat's not doing that job so it's still doing a job and it sounds good but if something's missing then add it rather mm-hmm. than trying to boost it I right. find okay. and then that means you get a better it's sound it's like trying to squeeze something out of something that's not actually got it in the first Aye. place you know if you're yeah. trying to yeah. just EQ it and give it and it's not there so I, it's, it's, that's an interesting point and cool. I suppose the, the last way to round up then is what have you got in the cards coming up yeah. what exciting news what Aye. gigs what, um, what tunes I mean the EP's just come out just now and that we, are label, the brave, yeah. uh, we shared that in the page as well I've so. just got, I've got I can't really say because it's not 100% freaking fun but I've got another EP coming out that I'm pretty happy with uh, just loads of touring coming up as well. I've got Creamfields tomorrow. Nice. So playing the Carol Cox stage. So that should Excellent. be the Steel Yard. So it should wow. be good fun. So, and then I'm away to Australia for a wee bit. And I just podding away, man. Digging on, digging That's on. it, just grafting away. Aye, excellent. So, Absolutely aye. excellent, man. Th- thanks very much for coming no, in. My pleasure, man. man. Thanks for having me. It's what been great talk. to hear the stories and aye. chat a bit about production. <laughs> we could probably well. do that again as well. Aye, aye. Aye, aye no bother. I I'll, always say it because it's like you just sometimes you find you don't get enough aye. and it's like you aye. think <laughs> more things are when you do when it is smooth. No, it's great, man. It's no, it's oh, great to hear so it, honestly. Much, my pleasure, man. Well, episode 19 with Harvey Mackay, legend. Thanks so much, mate. Until next time. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, Cheers. Perfect.